We all have those days. Your alarm goes off, you hit snooze, and wrap yourself up into a burrito, telling yourself just five more minutes. An hour later, you must strap the strength to get out of bed, but somehow you find yourself snuggling up in front of the fireplace to take in those cozy vibes, just for 10 minutes. Two cups of coffee and five YouTube videos later, you head back to your desk, only to realize it's 11 a.m. Oh no. Screw it, I guess I'll start working tomorrow. We all struggle with procrastination, and this has only gotten harder since work from home, with endless distractions literally at every turn. Our minds work against us to put up all these barriers to work. Maybe it's perfectionism, maybe it's a lack of focus or a lack of direction, maybe it feels like it's not the right time or the right place. Whatever it is, our brains make up all these excuses not to work. And even when you are procrastinating, when you're sitting on the couch watching one too many episodes of Chopped, the voice in the back of your mind starts saying, you really should be working. You're gonna regret this tomorrow, you lazy bum. And I've been a chronic procrastinator for as long as I can remember. And while I haven't completely let go of those tendencies, in fact, I'm not even close, I have developed a couple of systems from throughout the years to help curb that procrastination and help manage my time better. So yeah, let me take you along with me today as I share some of those tips with you. Now, I always used to feel bad, like something was wrong with me because I'd always procrastinate. I'd always put things off to the last minute and scramble to get them done. But procrastination is perfectly normal. Back in the day, Socrates himself asked, if one judges an action to be best, why would one do anything other than this action? Even when we know the best thing to do is start that essay or reply to that email, why don't we just do it? Well, because of what Aristotle called acrasia, weakness of will. We as humans act against our better judgment. The mind is far, far from a logical thing and it doesn't act in ways that we can easily predict. But if we can better understand why we do what we do, we can start training or maybe tricking our minds into getting stuff done. Human beings are creatures of habit and a simple, consistent morning routine always gives my day direction. When I first started working for myself, I struggled a lot with procrastination because I lacked that routine, with no office to commute to, no one to report to, and so much unstructured time, I had no idea what to do with myself. But now I developed a relatively consistent routine that I can stick to every day. You know how this goes, wake up at the same time every day, wear real clothes, take my vitamins, and coffee. Nothing complex, but enough to remind my brain that it's time to work. And I can sip that cup of coffee in peace because I know exactly what my plan is for the day. I have a goal that I need to accomplish. Every night I check my to-do list and update my task for the next day. I always feel a lot less stressed when I have a plan, and this tiny bit of consistency and planning is just enough to help me regain that peace of mind. The hardest part of any task, big or small, is getting started. It's those first five minutes when you put down your phone, open your computer, and stare at that blank Notion page. It seems like there's so much to do that we don't even know where to start. Now, there's this concept in chemistry called activation energy. You may have heard of it. It's the minimum amount of energy needed for a reaction to occur. Depending on the reaction, you may need a lot or very little. But once you're at that peak, everything else is smooth sailing. And the same goes for our work. It's just getting that initial boost that's so hard. And I'd often make it a lot harder on myself by setting such high, unrealistic expectations for my work, with ridiculous study schedules and undefined tasks on my to-do list. 
This never really did me justice because the activation energy would seem so high that my brain would make up any excuse to flee from work. But what if we lower that activation energy? What if we start small and let the momentum carry us from there? Instead of having one behemoth of a task, I'll split it up into tiny, almost negligible pieces such that it seems foolish to put them off. Instead of make video, I'll say film intro, film part one, part two, etc. Once I start the first task, everything else seems a lot less scary. It's kind of like making your bed in the morning. That simple 20 second short tricks your brain into thinking you've already accomplished so much, making the rest of your day a tiny bit more productive. Now, when I was thinking back to how this all started, I took myself back to 2010, to high school, aka the wild times, cramming term papers the night before they were due and studying for AP bio exams on the car ride to school. And somehow, I always got it done. I got that adrenaline rush at 2 a.m. to crank out that paper or debug a problem set. But I can't do that anymore. Not because I'm too old to stay up till 2 every day, but because in school, we had deadlines. If I miss a deadline, I failed. Or <laughs> at least I failed in the eyes of my parents. But as an adult, the repercussions are different, and I now value my time. I know that if I procrastinate today, the future me will face the burden of my actions, either by not being able to buy Yogi a new toy, or not being able to enjoy some Telugu movie guilt-free on Saturday night. So for my future self, I set deadlines. While I don't always stick to them, these help trick my brain into thinking that something is urgent. And as a result, I get a lot more done. In some cases, there may be complex reasons for why we procrastinate. Maybe we're afraid of failure or being judged. But for other things, we're just lazy. When I was in college, I didn't have to worry about taking out the trash or washing the dishes or doing my taxes. And now I don't want to think about those things. No one does. And this is where the two minute rule comes in. Basically, if there's any task that you can do in less than two minutes, which if you think about it is really a negligible amount of time, just do it. If the task is really annoying, I'll reward myself for completing it with a little break from work or a quick cuddle with Yogi. We make up so many excuses that we're too busy or too tired or not in the right mood. But our brains are just deceiving us by thinking that the simple chore is way harder than it actually is. In the time it takes you to convince yourself not to do something, it's much easier to just get up and do it. And for me, I fail to consider the suffering I'm causing my future self because of my momentary laziness. As a result, I end up with monstrosities lurking in my closet that even my mother gave up commenting on. So yeah, I guess this video is basically a reminder to myself to follow this rule, and my future self will thank me for it. And yeah, that's it for today's video. Now again, I want to remind you that procrastination is perfectly normal. In fact, even with all of these systems in place, I still pushed off making this video for a couple of days. So no tip or hack is gonna be foolproof. And sometimes all you really need is a day off or a little break to regain that productivity. But yeah, different things work for everyone. So if there's something that I missed in this video, please let me know in the comments down below. But otherwise, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big like and subscribe. Follow me on social media if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one.